where have you found beauty today? Okay, to be truthful, um, I have been in the house all day. I'm a homeschooling mom. We've homeschooled all morning. I'm sneaking away here in the afternoon to get some recording time in. And for me, beauty was found this morning when I started down the street, taking my dog for a walk. There is bunnies that hop around our neighborhood. Um, the air was perfect. It was 69 degrees. There's flowers that my husband planted on the front porch. That was a beautiful moment. But then later in the day, there was another beautiful moment. I remember sitting at the little breakfast nook table that we have, and the kids have like torn this table up. So it kind of wobbles when you lean on it a little bit. Um, but I was sitting there watching my little girl who's almost 12. She was working on her grammar workbook and just seeing her bent over um, working on her book. And she's one that's really struggled with learning and writing in her as neat as she can handwriting. I thought this is beauty. This is a beautiful moment. And I think so many times in life we forget to pause and enjoy the beauty around us. I mean, there was beauty when I was cutting up um, bell peppers for the chili that I'm making tonight as I'm looking at this bell pepper which is something that I probably bought for 99 cents at Walmart and I'm cutting into it and just realizing the intricacy of I can't say that word in okay we're just gonna skip over that word just the beauty of the bell pepper okay we're gonna leave it at that I'm tired I'm in homeschooling I told you that all day long but just to see that all around us there is beautiful things. And so we're going to be talking about that today with my guest, Ruth Jo Simons. And we're going to be talking about just discovering the beauty around us. Now, if you're not familiar with Ruth, um, pause and go look at gracelace.com. Um, and she has such wonderful, beautiful things. She's been, you'll hear, we've known each other for a while, and um, she, I've been a fan of her art. She creates beautiful, beautiful um, pieces of artworks and stationery and all, planner. She has a new planner, all these wonderful things. She really can capture the beauty and put it down into print for all of us to enjoy. But as we talk about today, Ruth and I, you're going to talk, you're going to hear us talk about just how to look at the beauty around us and see what God is doing and see how in our everyday lives we can capture those moments and see God's hand in them, see the beauty in them. So I just know that you're going to enjoy this interview with Ruth. You're listening to Walk It Out with Trisha Goyer, where we discover what it looks like to follow God and be swept away on the journey of a lifetime. Author of over 70 books, mom of 10, yes, 10, homeschooler and speaker, Trisha Goyer will explore what radical obedience to God's word looks like. It's time to hear from God lovers who've dared to say yes. Listen in to Heart to Heart Chats and learn how others overcame doubts and fears. Discover how God used ordinary people to impact others one step at a time. If you're ready to get radical, get going, and make a difference in this world, you're at the right place. Here's your host, prolific writer, world traveler, people lover, and mega nap taker, Trisha Goyer. Well, friends, today in Walk It Out, we're going to be talking about beauty. We're going to be talking about worship. We're going to be talking about also the mess of life with my friend. So I have here today Ruth Jo Simons. So welcome, Ruth. Thank you so much for having me, Trisha. It's super fun to be here. It's super fun. And I was trying to think of the first time we met. I think it was a loom. Absolutely. I attended your workshop, been, girl. Okay. 2008? I attended, yes. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, I I'm don't, trying to think. I don't know if it was that far back. It was It was one of, because I don't think I was even blogging yet. I think it was a little later okay. than that. But you were doing a workshop um, for aspiring authors. And I remember sitting in your session and then meeting you afterwards, kind of just, you know, I eyes wide, like, well, I wasn't even actually trying to write a book at the moment and I, no book proposal out there, but just really inspired and really encouraged with your story. And so I still remember that. And you were so kind. 
so kind to talk no, to me. I love that. And I remember when your shop first got online mm-hmm. and I still have some of the first prints oh, in my, my house. You're amazing. And I just I just love it so much. And I just love to see what God um, has been doing with you over the years. But for those who may not be so familiar, can you just start by introducing yourself and your family? Absolutely. I'm Ruth Simons. I am a mom to six boys. Um, my oldest is starting college this fall. He's going to stay at home and go local, but he is 17. And my youngest son is six years old, um, who acts 16. He's six going on 16. <laughs> but um, we have six boys, and my husband, Troy, and I have been married 21 years. Um, in, in previous seasons of our marriage, he was a teaching, preaching pastor of a church that, um, well, he, he was a collegiate pastor, youth pastor, did all that. Um, we founded a church at one season of our lives, church planters, and then also were um, part of co-founding a classical Christian university model school um, in New Mexico that we were part of for almost eight years in which he headmastered. And um, and so it was just a really wonderful multiple um decades of doing ministry locally and w- through education and through homeschooling and through um, the local church. And now we are currently in this season, full-timers with homeschooling and full-timers um, with gracelace.com, a website I began originally as a website, um, I mean, as a blog, and later on became a website in which I get to share my artwork, my watercolors and paintings of scripture, of anything inspirational through lifestyle products and stationary products um, around the world. And so I, in the last couple of years, I've had the incredible honor and privilege of publishing several books. And my first book, Grace Lace, Discovering Timeless Truths Through Seasons of the Heart came out in 2017. And I have a new book coming out called Beholding and Becoming the Art of Everyday Worship, which arrives September 10th. Yeah, and I'm so excited. I've already pre-ordered it. I have a little flyer that your publisher sent me that has a little leaflet. has like, I don't know, maybe 20 pages in it with some of the art. And I'm just enjoying it so much. But every time I see it, I'm like, okay, I kind of want to rip out this page and put it on my my wall. (laughs) Well, I promise most of those, every page will probably be some form or another in the shop and available as prints. So don't rip out your book. (laughs) Okay, I won't rip up the book. I promise. (laughs) <laughs> but, you know, we mentioned the blogging conference mm-hmm. and you talk about starting with the blog. Um, but I know that you are just this amazing artist. So did you start as an artist just looking for an avenue like through the blog to write or how did that all begin? Oh, I love that you're asking this question because, you know, um, so I've always been artsy. I've always been artistic. And I did get my degree ultimately in art. And it's just a funny story because I started off biochem major at Berkeley, at UC Berkeley. And oh, wow. ultimately through via Westmont College and then finally at the University of New Mexico, I ended up getting an art degree, ultimately not um, out of any kind of deep conviction, but just because I was weary and tired of performing, which we can Mm -hmm. talk about another time too. But, you know, it really was a journey in learning something about grace and learning something about um, trying to earn a favor versus feeling like my identity was already established. And so, you know, um, it's funny how the Lord redeems all things, but I wasn't trying to build a career in art. In fact, even now, Trisha, I think of my artwork. I mean, I, I have no control over the fact that God gifted my hands and my eyes with an ability to see something that he's made and kind of have a natural, I have a knack. I have a natural ability mm-hmm. to make a peony look like a peony or paint a bird. And, um, and I'm not saying it's, you know, all talent and no hard work. Of course I practiced and of course I improve year by year, but, um, but that God given talent to me has always been given to me as, um, a a vehicle, a vessel, a a conduit of the thing that I feel most passionate about. And that's ultimately just the message of sharing the gospel and the grace of God in everyday life. And so it was really never, um, the blog was never intended to be a platform to share artwork. In fact, I think the first, um, until the year that I actually painted some things for the Alum brochure, I don't think anyone really knew that I painted. And so, um, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't even the kind of blogger that led out with a leading header image or a thumbnail that had artwork on it. Um, I was a pastor's wife. I was doing well to 
um, minister and meet with some young women during nap times. And then maybe my dinner would show up on the table a little bit more artistic. And I think I decorated a few cakes at the se- in those seasons and um, maybe sewed some curtains. But um, the Lord did not allow for that season to be one where I could pull out a canvas or get out all my watercolors. And um, I learned quickly that it really wasn't about that particular skill or medium, like the Lord was after my heart and he wanted me Mm. to really like be okay with the relationship that he was developing with me and that whatever medium he gave me, whether it was through cooking up dinner or um, learning an instrument with my children or homeschooling or teaching them the basics of the color wheel, whatever it was in that season or gardening, you know, whatever it is that we're given to do in that season, that was a way for me to express art. And so my artisticness. And so um, it's just a kind of a wonder to me now that all these years later, um, I have an opportunity to do both that I get to write and adorn the gospel with my artwork, but it was never really, um, it's really never been about just selling art or creating Mm -hmm. pretty things. It really was the message. And the Lord just gave me these, the skill set to be able to kind of come alongside my words and have an opportunity to illustrate and give life to my words in a new way. Oh, I love that so much because I think, you know, when we all start out, we always have an idea of this is what we want to do and this is how we're going to reach people for God. And it's, and we still can do those things. Like, you know, you're still meeting with women. You're still, yes. um, you know, face to face encouraging, but also God's like, and then there's this, and it's almost like this unfolding. Right. Um, and you talk That's about right. like being this new journey from even New Mexico to where you are now in Colorado. Mm-hmm. And just mm-hmm. these journeys are God has more for us that if we would know the whole picture, like we would, oh, first right. of all, be both so scared and too overwhelmed to even know what to do with it but instead it's like one step at a time he unfolds everything for us and I just love how um I would say you know your art is just so amazing but I love that that there's a message behind it and even as I'm looking at your new book you know all the the animal the creatures and the flowers you have in the beginning like what they represent and the meaning behind them and Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's so beautiful. It's not just a flower. It is, yeah. It's a bluebell and it's yes. for humility. And yes. um, yeah. I think you just open it up and you just show us that, you know, it's, it's giving us a glimpse of God and his word, but also through pictures. So it's through your words, but also through your art and through pictures. That is just something that I think our soul needs is what mm. you talk about too, is just the worship and to connect yeah. with this amazing world that God has given us. Well, thank you. That's such a kind commendation. And that's exactly what I hope people get out of it. And, um, you know, I think it's interesting because I've created this book with all this beauty. And I think as writers, you and I have this in common and that we want to create an experience for someone through words, through storytelling that gives them a place where they feel like, wow, this moment, I get to see clearly how faithful God is. But when we look at your story and my story, and I just know enough of your story to be able to say this, and I I, I know that you and I would agree, but for all your listeners out there, I, I'm guessing that they would be sitting there nodding their heads when I say this, but every beautiful thing that you see in a finished work right now in my life or in your life Mm -hmm. had a moment of true heartache and loss at its start. And I, and I say that because I think it's really easy to listen to a podcast um, of a conversation between two published authors who in some sense sound like they've made it and they've, they got to experience their dream. And I just want to say up front here that this is a beautiful book, but the beautiful book represents two years that came out of extreme loss and heartaches, things that I didn't necessarily write about because they're not public. It's not a public circumstance, mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. but that even the opportunity to paint and write came out of a season where my life didn't turn out the way I expected it to. And even previous to that, the decade in which I was raising those six boys, I didn't get to do any of these things that I wanted to right. be doing. And so I mentioned that and I say it out loud just to say, um, it's not that beauty itself begets more beauty. It's that surrendering to whatever heartache the Lord allows in your life sometimes is the very thing that waters everything you need 
to bloom beautifully. Meaning ultimately, you know, we think, oh, I'm not doing anything beautiful today. Like it's not this glorious creative day for me. I mean, I basically changed diapers and answered a million calls and clean out my fridge. How's that beautiful? Mm -hmm. And my point in this book is ultimately our faithfulness right here in that in the, in the midst of what we think is not worshipful or beautiful actually is building and changing us and causing us to be conduits of that grace and to see the beauty of grace in our lives all the more. And so, you know, um, so hopefully the book itself is just an opportunity for people to stop and linger longer and slow down and recognize that, um, we can't take our lives at face value and we can't just say, Hey, worship is on Sunday. And then every other day is just me surviving my mundane, difficult routine life. Yeah, that is so good. And I think, you know, we talk about the seasons, which we've had those seasons and mm -hmm. then sometimes God leads us back into those seasons. You know, I oh, mean, I was yeah. selling books and mm -hmm. writing four to five books a year and booking mm -hmm. along and God's like adopt children. And I'm now I'm like mm -hmm. every day I'm like, can I even sit down and write a paragraph? Because my brain is just mm -hmm. so tired. You know, just I mean, right before our call, you know, we, we both homeschool. I'm working with a child who is uh, special needs. I mean, you would never know like mm -hmm. just her wit and stuff, but she mm -hmm. has the hardest time in school and she's, mm -hmm. you know, so far behind and we're trying to work in math and I'm telling my husband, I don't know what to do. And then, but you know, that's the stuff like I don't get on all the time and share on social media and stuff because it's right. her story. You know, right. I'm not going right. to share her name. I'm not going to share any of yeah. those things, right. but then they see, Oh, look at Trisha. She's writing these books. And I think so many times, what you're saying is true. And I think it's important for us as messengers to share, mm -hmm. like, it's not all the glory. It's all not yes. all the, the yes. fun. It is the hard stuff that we are doing too, but this is yes. what God calls us to. Um, you know, we talk, we're able to speak and travel and do these things, but at home we have hard days and there's hard things and there's hard seasons. Yes. Um, and that's all part of the journey. And I think it makes us more real. Like we need God right. more. We need him in all these moments. And you wouldn't see the fruit of that book you hold in your hand, yours or mine. Like we wouldn't see the fruit of that if it wasn't worked out in the most mundane everyday ways in which we have to apply the gospel in our lives, you know? And so, um, no, it's not like I sit there and have a quiet time and the hummingbirds are singing or, you know, floating around me. And I am just, <laughs> you know, I don't have a fresh bouquet of flowers sitting next to me while I read my Bible. It doesn't look like that. And yet I think that is, it's, it's, it's a joy to me to pre be able to present a book that is full of really beautiful artwork to remind us, look up, like there is mm -hmm. beauty all around in God's creation, but sometimes we're not paying attention. We're not staying awake for the everyday moments of our lives. We're not paying attention to when blooms are in, um, in season and also the beauty of when we're waiting and it's not in season, <laughs> you know? Right. Exactly. Well, I love, um, you know, just the beholding and just the message of the book. And I was um, skimming the beginning of this chapter and um, something, I'm going to read it. And then it just made me think, and I think it leads into something you talked about earlier. And it says, you say, take a personal inventory, look at what you spend the most money on, get the most upset about, give the most time to worry the most about, or are most willing to sin to acquire, take an honest look at what holds these places in your heart and you'll discover what you worship. And I was like pausing there for a minute, especially on the part that said what you get most upset about, because mm -hmm. I think after all these kids, the things that I find myself upset about over and over is my messy house. Like I want mm -hmm. it to Girl, be perpetual. A, perpetual yeah, issue. I want yes. it to be a clean house, organized mm -hmm. house. And, mm -hmm. um, but I think back to why does that make me so upset? So this is even as I'm preparing for this interview, I'm thinking of all these things because my heritage, I'm Hispanic, mm -hmm. my grandma and my mom, always have a clean house like mm. there's always dinner on the table there's mm -hmm. always a clean house and so it doesn't matter if nothing else got done in their day they had a clean house and so for mm. me I mean we've adopted seven kids which just adds to yes. everything and it's not always clean and it's not always organized and that's the right. thing I find myself getting upset so you said earlier about your struggle with feeling like you had to perform mm -hmm. um now would you think it is something that came from your heritage, came from your background, or is it something that you kind of took on your own? 
Yeah, I love that question. Well, I think for one thing, um, some of us are definitely built with a little bit more, we have a propensity towards perfectionism. I mean, I think some Mm -hmm. of us are, you know, whether you're an Enneagram follower or not, like some of us are that achieving, performing, like I want to you know, if I paint this painting, I'm going to crumple it up if it's not perfect and start over. Some, you know, you see it in your child right away. If you have a child like that and some children are like finger paint, it's okay. Get it all over the place. It's not a big deal, but I definitely, so some of it may be for sure nature, but, um, but being of Chinese descent, I grew up in a, in the Chinese culture. I was born in Taiwan. My family is from China. Um, I think that my parents were very, very reasonable overall in the big scheme of cultural stereotypes and and things that we've seen through um, cultural norms. However, overall, um, I do think that as a culture, there is a strong, strong leaning towards honor and performance Mm -hmm. and being number one. There is like such a strong inclination towards... um, who is the best child? Who is the best daughter? Who is the one who got the best grade, went to the best school? And I think for the longest time, I could not understand the grace of God. I thought I did. I mean, I thought I did because I went to VBS or I went to Sunday school and I thought I got it because, you know, I, I completed the course, right? But but I didn't get it because I mm-hmm. I really still thought that there was something I could do to make myself worthy of being saved. And so at some level there, I didn't see my heavenly father as one that was saying, I am knowable. I am near. Call me Abba father and throw yourself at my feet so that I may come and rescue you. It didn't seem like that to me. In fact, I don't think I I think I skipped over the whole part where I needed rescuing. And in my younger years, I think I just thought, well, these are the things that he wants me to do for him. And basically I'm going to prove to him that I was worthy of, you know, dying on the cross for her. And so, you know, it's an interesting thing how much you have to stop and recognize, like, I mean, I I do a lot of personal self inventorying where I go, why am I so anxious about this? Why Mm -hmm. am I so stressed out about this? Why am I so upset about this? And that's where that excerpt that you were reading, that that's where that comes from. Because ultimately I can't worship Christ fully and worship myself at the same time. But I think there's so much in my nature and my natural um, inclination and just the way I've let routine and habit form in my life where somehow I'm still trying to save myself. And I have to purposefully repeat the gospel to myself to remember um, there's nothing there is not, not not the sale of a book, not the perfect painting, not obedient children, none of those things, um, or an easy homeschool day that went flawlessly. None of those things, not even a clean house, will secure my happiness, mm-hmm. cause me to be truly satisfied, or be my ticket to never having to need the Lord to correct me, right? And so ultimately, um, I think that's where the grace of God really got a hold of me um, in my teen years and really caused me to go, okay, I might know in general what it is to be a Christian, but I, I think I finally understand how to receive grace. And so I've kind of been obsessed about it ever since, just recognizing that um, I'm not just saved so that I could avoid hell, but saved to an abundant life every day. And, and that's really where Grace Laced and Beholding Becoming have come out of just that desire to see how God's grace will transform our lives where we least expect it. Yeah, that is so beautiful. And I so love it. And even if we had one thing, like the perfect homeschool day, which Mm -hmm. I don't know, I've never ever had one (laughs) of those, there'd be still all the other things that wouldn't be going. And I, you know, just, I just, and I think my mind wants to make myself comfortable, make the day go well, make things easy on myself. And I remember just God, you know, just not the audible voice, but in my spirit, like, Mm -hmm. I love you just as much when there's laundries Mm -hmm. everywhere. And I love you just as much when you are, you know, dealing with this child. In fact, I asked you to do this. I know that it's hard. And it's just like surrendering to him, like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. And it's not a picture perfect place at all (laughs) by anyone's stretch of the imagination, but I just need to turn to you and see you here. And I love that. Find a way to worship God in the moment. Right. And we, 
don't you think we are always, um, you know, I'm in my mid forties and I'm always like, Lord change me. I want to see myself, you know, in my thirties, I was like in my forties, I would like to be this kind of woman in my forties. I'm thinking about my fifties going in my fifties. I would love to become whatever it is that I've been thinking about, whether it's in, um, things that I can achieve by that point or personality things or, or getting over some of my quirks and wanting to like put my faith in the Lord greater, you know, whatever those things are that I want to become. Um, I find it so interesting that I ask for the becoming, but I'm not welcoming of the sanctification. Like I'm not Mm. always welcoming of the fact that the very thing that's in my mundane life, like the laundry that's not put away, the Lord uses all of those things, right? Or when things turn out really unfair, I wrote a chapter about that um, just because it was fitting in my life that that sometimes things don't turn out the way you expect it to, or the way you think it should when it's fair. And, um, And rather than just survive that moment, why are we forgetting that God uses all those things for our sanctification, for our good and his glory, and that that's part of our becoming. And so I'm learning day by day. And in the last two years, as I wrote this book, just that, um, all that becoming, all the shaping, all the molding, all the, I want to, I want to see this differently. All that, that I asked for is actually happening right there in my everyday life where I have to start with the very things like how I think about family how I think about my words, how I think about repetitive tasks, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that is so good. And yeah, and it, I, I totally agree that we have these all these things we want to achieve in our 30s. And by the time right? we're 40s, we're like, just do what you want. Like, yes. just, just do what you want. Because I'm tired so of fighting. True. Like, we're just going to go with what you think you. is best. Yep. And, um, you know, and I've been I've been studying a lot just in the first chapter of Luke. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Zachariah had all the knowledge. And then when he was given the promise of a child, he doubted. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mary, just a, a chapter later, had no no, she wasn't a priest. She didn't know all the rules. Mm-hmm. She wasn't in there. Mm-hmm. But as soon as she was given the promise, she accepted it and mm-hmm. said, just do with me ha- as you will, Lord. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh my goodness, sometimes we need to go back to that. That just that, like, here mm-hmm. you go. Good. Just do yeah. with it. Do with me what you will. Yes. Um, and and you know, even thinking of your art, um, you know, when you sit down and you start putting you know, shapes down and colors down, you can't see the whole picture. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, you, you have it in your mind what you want to have on the page. And that's like with God, we're like, why are you putting this dark spot over here? <laughs> this right. is, and you're like, wait, that's going to turn right. into something beautiful. Just you wait. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. Okay. So I want to talk about family um, because I know you have a busy house and lots of kids and homeschooling and I have a busy house and lots of kids. And I know too, um, I mean, both of our hearts are, yes, there's a ministry outward, but also the ministry is inward. So I just love to share just mm-hmm. your heart. And I know Troy's heart behind that, like that is our primary, primary mission field is these kids mm-hmm. in our home. Absolutely. You know, um, I probably say it at least once a day with Troy, where I literally say, um, I have to live the words I write first Mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. Like I have to, because if I don't, and if he does not, if I'm not open and honest before him of my struggles spiritually, when I feel dry about reading God's word, when I'm not getting anything out of my Bible reading plan or whatever, I, wherever I'm in, in, in numbers or whatever it is, you know, right. um, that I have to be honest about those things because we live in a time where it's really easy just to produce and just to do the next thing and create the work that people expect you to create and, um, and separate that, um, the, the living it out in your everyday real life. And for me, that audience, that my community group is that family of eight that's at home. Meaning if I want to talk about, you know, being accountable to community in confession and prayer, then I got to start doing that at home. If I, if I want to be accountable to um, sharing the gospel to the ends of the earth, well then I might want to start by being able to speak the gospel to my kids as we're driving to the grocery store, you know? And so the reality for me is the recognition that it's really easy and maybe not to everybody, but I think for most of us, it's kind of easy to do something big for the Lord in front of a microphone or with your name in lights or being able to be called out and pack your bags and go on the mission field But the lives that are in your home, whether it be your spouse, your children, the aged parents that you're caring for, um, 
maybe there's a season where you have an exchange student in your home, but whoever God's put in your sphere of influence, um, that's your home front. That's your first mission field. And it's taken me a long time to recognize that because, you know, Troy and I went off to seminary, thought that we were going to be full-time career missionaries. Um, it's, it's always, there's always been a part where it seemed like that was a, um, a professional endeavor. And so, you know, whether it be pastoring a church or, or being in full-time ministry, but we're in full-time ministry all the time mm-hmm. when we have souls to care for at home. And so the way that looks in our house is that, um, it, no, we don't, we don't, we don't have a perfect family worship, perfect quiet times. It's not perfectly consistent all the time. Sometimes we, as leaders of our community group, we lose our temper and we yell and we uh, confess and apologize and seek forgiveness. And, and it's all the messy stuff that we want to know is real and true in the local church. It's happening at our homes because we're realizing like, yeah, we, we're the, we're the body here. And so, um, so yeah, there's a lot of working that out, recognizing that um, even teaching kids how to clean up their messes in their bedroom, that's a discipleship and a gospel opportunity. doesn't mean that I sit there and say, fold your laundry because Jesus saves. I mean, it's not that direct, but but sometimes it's like, well, let's, let's look at why we've been put on earth. Like, what is it about um, doing all things unto the Lord? that is ultimately not just going to bring him glory, but cause us to fulfill our purposes in which he created us. And so that's a privilege for us parents, you know, and I, I need that reminder just as much as anybody else. I don't wake up every day, Trisha, you don't either wake up every day going, Lord, I'm so honored and privileged that I get to, (laughs) you know, do 50 math problems and pick up dirty laundry that got stuffed under the bed. You know, you don't, you don't wake up saying that, but that's why we have to preach truth to ourselves and remind ourselves the gospel in moment by moment moments, you know, in our homes. Yeah. And I think it's so um, important, like, especially as their kids getting older, like Mm -hmm. they're going to be able to see what we're writing online. (laughs) It's like, Oh mom, you talk about patience in the scripture verse, but you were very patient. And it does. It's like, you're right. Right. I wasn't patient with you. And man, I've done more apologizing in the last Mm -hmm. couple of years going before my kids, because it is so true. Mm -hmm. We can say one thing and it is so easy to share a scripture verse and a little devotional thought, but then it's the real life, the real people that really, it, it, makes it real to us. Do do you know, um, I've made it a practice. I mean, it's not like this hard and fast rule, but when people ask me how I do social media and how my kids end up not, you know, they're not on social media. I think my oldest now finally started an Instagram account as he's going to college and expanding his interests and stuff. But overall, do you know what I do is I actually have my kids, I'll either read out loud every Instagram post or I'll have them read it. Um, Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, I, I'll write something and I might be on my phone tapping it out for Instagram. And um, from across the room, they could look at mom and be like, oh, she's looking down at her phone. How is that different than her saying, look up, like, don't, don't, you know, obsess about your phone, for example. Like, how is that different for me to be working on my phone, for example? Or what is it that I'm really writing and saying about? And yeah. I, and I want to make sure that my family approves and is okay with everything that I write about. And I don't ever write anything super, super personal naming any child or anything like that. But ultimately, um, I, I feel like it's, it makes me accountable when they read it because they know that is indeed what I'm processing. And I want them to know that I want them to ultimately see that I'm the same person online as I am at home. And, um, you know, that's something to strive for day by day. Yeah. When my last book, um, calming angry kids, it's all about Mm -hmm. anger in the home. Mm -hmm. So I did change their names, um, Mm -hmm. in the book, but I also asked the older ones all to read it. Mm -hmm. And I sat and read it with the younger kids. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was thinking, oh, they're going to say, oh, it didn't happen this way. I didn't get any of that because I tried Mm -hmm. to tell the stories as true to the facts as possible. But what they said is, mom, I didn't know you felt that way. Or I didn't know you thought about this. Or I didn't know you were praying about that. And, you know, they had tears in their eyes. And one girl was like, Mm -hmm. can you write more about us like this? And I'm like, I'm talking, I'm talking about the time you like slammed the door on my face, (laughs) but just revealing like what was going on in my heart and what I was praying Mm -hmm. for them and how I was trying to help them really, it kind of gave, I guess, a different um, layer to the relationship Mm -hmm. to having them 
see that part being able to read calming angry kids so I think it has been helpful not that I just want them to read my books to read my books but it's like okay I need you to read this and check it like this is you live with me is this really us is this really our story and they were all like yes this is this is it so I think that is so important um and then they you know like you said your son starting college they go into the world and they like they're gonna have to face this social media and all these things and trying to put up a front and um, trying to be someone they're not and all those types of things they're gonna have to deal with that in their own lives too right right oh that's neat yeah and then so this transition now that you have you know a son transitioning to adulthood how Mm -hmm. is that feeling you know i i'm probably more of a basket case in some ways than I would like to admit. Like I, I have little moments where I'm like, how, how many more summers are we going to take vacations together? I mean, he's not dying. He's like, right. in the college, you know. <laughs> and then I get kind of like weirded out about what am I going to say when he finally really, really, you know, takes interest to a young woman and what am I going to do? You know? And, and I have those moments. So I will just be perfectly honest. Um, I'm still working through those feelings. Um, I don't, I've never been a mom to girls, so I don't really know the difference, but I know that as a mom to boys, Mm -hmm. um, mamas have a special place with boys and, and sometimes I feel like the only girl in their lives. And so when I think about their future wives, I'm working very intentionally right now to pray for that future wife and not to feel jealous of her already. And so, um, because that's just my honest answer is you, you spend all this time, um, being that one woman in his life that speaks truth and sits on the bed and encourages him and gives those hugs. And I'm not always going to be that person. Um, I will always be me, but I won't be the only person. And so we're working through all those feelings. Um, and I, you know, I, because he's a young, um, college student who had, dual enrollment home school, school credits. So of course, any of your listeners who do this would probably understand what I'm talking about. Just that, you know, he had dual enrollment online homeschool credits. So he actually um, kind of knocked out his first year of college early. And so mm-hmm. even with really great, incredible presidential scholarships at nice and big prestigious schools around the country, we just ultimately said, and we did not make the decision for him actually, but he ultimately just said he wanted to stay home just because he was young and he um, was still feeling like mm, he wasn't ready to be a, a college sophomore at 17 um, away from yeah. home. And he just has plenty of time to do that. And so he works for Grace Laced. And so he is also an invaluable staff member. And so we're super grateful. Um, he obviously bought his first car and is driving and doing his own thing. And it's not always home, but um, his five brothers are very, very excited that they don't have to say goodbye just yet. (laughs) Yeah. And I love that too. And we did that with our um, oldest ones all went, started college, stayed at home. And then our daughter that we adopted, she went to her first year away, which is only an hour, but this year she's staying home. It was just Mm -hmm. too much. It was too much too soon. We had just adopted her a couple of years prior. And I think that, I mean, it's good. I mean, kids, especially when they're, it's their decision that they want, that they would need to be home. But the cool thing is now that I have adult kids is kind of seeing them taking those steps and making those decisions. And then all those things Mm -hmm. almost that, um, you know, we wanted to do, to see them kind of, you know, serving other people. Like my daughter, one of my daughters is a missionary and she lives in the Czech Republic. And my son, one of my sons teaches um, our children's ministry. My other son wrote a novel and it's like, oh, I'm like multiplying myself. You know, you think about like, it is like daily sitting down and doing the math sheet or going over the essay that they wrote. But it really is um, as we're living and serving and pouring into them, like someday as adults, they're going to be doing these things and reaching the world and connecting with people, which is just an amazing thing to see with our kids. Well, and I think we forget that what we're preparing them for isn't just, hey, do you know how to do a bank account? Do you know how to, you know, make sure gas is in your car? And because I'm always thinking like that, like as a mom, I'm practical and I'm going, do I know, have I taught you how to, um, you know, be mindful about, which parties to go to, which not to go to, you know, like that's not even an issue, but I'm just saying those are the things on my mind. You know, how do you recognize when you should, um, you know, you know, just being mindful about worldly things. Right. Well, I'm always thinking about that, but the reality I think is that 
my their time at home, I think what's shaping them more is probably watching how I deal with trials and heartaches in my life. Yeah. And so it's it's just fascinating to me that I think who he's become has more to do with us going through really hard times as a family and imperfectly praying for one another, working it out, confessing sin, going through like, mm, what do we do when we're disappointed? What do we do when the Lord didn't answer our prayers the way we thought? What do we do when we have to um, make changes? You know, that it's all that that's like shaped the man he's become versus not that he doesn't know how to balance a bank account. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, does, he knows how to do that. But I just think it's interesting that, um, Really, I feel like the the privilege I'm realizing more and more is every moment that I have a child at home with me is a moment to show them how to work out their salvation mm -hmm. in real and maybe sometimes painful ways in their like everyday life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then just going back to your book and how to worship in everyday yeah. life, whether it's right. taking the meal to someone or, right. and usually my right. kids are like, oh, someone just moved in. Let's take them something or do something. It's like, that. yeah, okay. This is, this is what it's about. It is mm -hmm. about just worshiping and serving others right where we are in our mm -hmm. everyday. It's not always picture perfect. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what God is calling us to. And that's what I am so excited about um, for this book. I cannot wait to hold it in my hands. I know it's going to be beautiful, just like oh, all the things you. that you produce. Um, but thank you, Ruth, so much for just being here today, sharing your heart, sharing your story with my listeners. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Tricia. It's been a pleasure. Yep. And you already mentioned um, gracelaced.com. Um, so is that the best way for people to just find out about you and yeah. the new book? So, so to find my artwork and products, we have everything from stationary products to art prints and canvases. That's all found at gracelaced.com. And we do ship worldwide. Um, but to find my all my books are available online anywhere books are sold amazon barnes and noble at sam's club hobby lobby has my books in the front register Yay! so stop by and pick those up um but you can find where i'm speaking and just learn more about my work at ruthjoesimons.com and that's r-u-t-h-c-h-o-u-s-i-m-o-n-s.com and uh, ruth joe simons on instagram is where i really just share my heart day by day Oh, thank you, Ruth, so much for being here. And I just thank love all God, all God is doing through you. Oh, thank you so much. It's been a joy to be here. I just love Ruth so much. I just love her tenderness and her gentleness and just chatting with her, even chatting about our kids. And it is just so inspiring to me. And I just love what God is doing with her. I love how he is using her and is expanding her ministry. I'm sure more than she ever hope for or imagine. And so I just, I just love how God um, just uses our unique gifts and helps us to reach others with the gospel. And I just love seeing how God is reflected in Ruth and what she is doing. So today's uh, Walk It Out scripture is 2 Corinthians 3, 18. And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And I know when I see my friend Ruth, I can just see God all over her. I just think that she just glows with the love of God. And I see that so many in my friends, that as we seek Him, as we seek to love other people, serve other people, use the talents that God has given us, we are reflecting the glory of God. We are being transformed um, one degree by the next degree into the image of Christ as we allow Christ to work in us and to work through us. So I'm going to pray about this today for all of us. Dear God, I just thank you so much that, first of all, that you are worthy of our praise. Just seeing every little detail of all the things we created, the fact that I'm sitting here and able to speak and communicate and breathe, and I could hear my kids running around in the other room. I mean, so many things that just being, just being in the moment, just our human beings are just amazing. And then if you go beyond that to look at nature, to look at relationships, look at societies. I mean, all these are wonderful, beautiful creations, Lord. And I thank you for that. I think sometimes it's easy to think about the birds and the 
the bees and the flowers and the trees and all those as being beautiful and intricate. But the fact that we can have friendships and relationships and communities and come together and worship you. I mean, all those are amazing things. And I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, that, um, that you desire for us to seek you. And as we seek you and as we follow you and as we use the gifts that you give us, that we are transformed into your glory. I pray for my friend today out there that maybe doesn't feel like she has anything or he has anything to give, but instead that you will just flow through them today. Um, and that they, as they step out and follow you and serve you in those tiny ways or big ways or anything that you call us to, that people will be able to see your glory upon us um, and be drawn to you, God. Thank you for my friend Ruth. Thank you for her ministry. Thank you for what you're doing in her. And may you continue to be glorified in all, all our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, friend, I am so thankful that you tuned in to Walk It Out today. I treasure every one of you. I love thinking that you might be listening to this while you're driving in your car or doing your laundry or, um, you know, chasing kids around the house. I mean, any of those things, I thank you that you take time to listen and that you're encouraged. If you have any thoughts for me, any encouragement for me, um, I would just love for you to drop me a note at hello at trishagoyer.com. I would love hearing from you. Also, share this podcast with a friend. I know that um, what Ruth shared today was just so inspiring. I love sharing it with my friends. So think of friends, uh, post it on Instagram or Facebook, tag me, tag Ruth, and just say, hey, I see God's glory being being, um, transformed in you today or transforming you. And just let your friend know and let Ruth and I know that you are listening and that you are sharing with a friend. I would love to continue to connect with you here, but also on Facebook or Instagram on my website. There's so many ways. Um, So just be a blessing to me today and reach out and that will make my day. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to Walk It Out. And I just know that God is using you. So Keep going, keep strong, and let him continue to use you and transform you for his glory. Thanks, friends. Thanks for listening to Walk It Out. Head over to the show notes for this podcast and all past episodes at www.walkitoutpodcast.com. If you love the show, share it with someone you know who can make a radical difference in the world. We love new friends. See you next time.